Thank you very much. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Give him glory. Ah. Give him honor. Give God adoration. Give God adoration. Worship. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, you are great, you are mighty, you are marvelous. Your ways are true. Though men doubt you, their doubts mean nothing. Those who believe are the better. The scripture is written for our perfection. That the man of God might be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Oh Jesus, I bless you, I thank you, I honor you. Be honored forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to tell a story, an event, a happening that will give the American congregation the first to hear it from my mouth. Uh, it's a disturbing information, but to us who are alive, who are, in, who are living, it is a constructive information. For those who know that there is a tomorrow, it is a reproving information. It's an information that helps you to prepare more. Amen. Yes. About two weeks ago, I visited an elderly state man in the hospital. Uh, this man in our tribe should be one of the few highest men. I'm sure he would have died at maybe 80 years. He was an elite, well-educated man. He has done so much and was held in reverence. His wife is a justice in the government of Nigeria. She had been a high court judge for so many years. So, when I was there, I visited that hospital with Pastor Emmanuel Boacha. He was not able to give me attention because the man was in pain. But he knew that I came in there. So, after quite some time, I went with some books to give the wife. I thought he was still in strength to read. And I went with memory card with the MP3 so that they could play for him to hear. which I'm not sure such was done. Today, I just came from his place, and what has sent me here was because I had a message to preach to you. I might have still delayed 
in his house because the man has died. I went to condole his wife. Now, when I returned about maybe 15 minutes to 3 in Nigerian time, because I was to start preaching to you at 3, but it went to 3.15. So, maybe then, about 30 minutes ago, my wife, Sister Linda, began to tell me the encounter he had with the man in the realm of the spirit. The man had gone before God in judgment and had received condemnation to hell. He was told, I, I sent a man to you in your hospital bed in mercy to deliver you, but you despised him. You despised him. You did not know that the man that came there is your savior. I gave him what? If you had hurt him and confessed your sins, you would have been saved because I, saved, I sent him there for mercy. The man was speaking this thing to Mommy Linda. He said, we know, we know Pastor Paul Rica because we are from the same village. In fact, his house should be 30 seconds from my house in a trackable distance of 30 seconds. So this is somebody I knew from childhood. He said, we have heard about Pastor. We heard about the holiness gospel he preached, but I disdained it. By my denomination, we didn't believe those things. We didn't believe those things. So, from what he was saying, I perceive when I came, and he knew I came, he had chance to have talked with me, but because of this disdain, he didn't give me a chance to minister anything to him. In fact, he didn't even show that he knew, uh, uh, he knew I was there. I was praying for him by faith. And then he was answering, Amen, Amen. Oh, so he's hearing. The angel of the Lord told him over there, that was salvation at your doorstep. So, he said all this doctrine of uh, remove earring, remove jewelry, he, they didn't believe that it meant anything. He didn't, he just talked that small boys were just uh, uh, making a do. Now his eyes have opened. That what we are doing is the right Christianity. He has gone to see it over there. And now he's going to hell. He loves his family. He has missed it. Please go and tell Pastor. I'm pleading with him. Let him go to my wife and tell my wife all this denominational business that we are doing. All this Christianity that we, have, we thought we were is not the standard. Follow Pastor Paul Rica. The thing he is saying, this is the standard. As for me, I have missed it. But I love my family. Go and gather my wife and my, my children. Gather them and tell them they should listen to Pastor Paul Rica. That is a savior among men, but people don't know. 
That's what the angel told him. Just to give you a, a little thing. Hot from the bakery. Hot bread. It will help you to know that you're not playing here. It will help you that tomorrow will be your turn if you play. Take this thing we're saying casually. The man has sinned every kind of sin. He had been the local government chairman of our local government. He had been a deputy um, vice chancellor. I'm sorry, yes, administration. Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration in ABU Zaria, a famous university in Nigeria, right back to the 80s. The great man. People will come from everywhere to converge in our village because of him. It might be a helicopter that will carry his dead body there. He despised the servant of God that the Lord sent. He is speaking from there. And he's not only telling his family, but he's telling the whole world. God has given us a man that he is walking in, but people are not aware. You will all go and testify. I mean, you will, me also, not, not surely. Me also go and say, I even sat under his congregation, under him, in his congregation. If you play with this thing we're teaching you, not knowing that the God of your soul is involved in your salvation, you are thinking it's a play. You love Satan more than God. All right? Let the God of heaven be exalted. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm talking to you on be like Daniel and the three Hebrews children. In righteousness and holiness. Be like Daniel. And the three Hebrews children. In righteousness and holiness. In the book of Titus. Chapter 2. Verse 11. To 14. It goes. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. At 15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. What is the Lord talking to us? Grace, help, mercy, enablement of God. It's available for you. It's available for you. Had been available for this man, even to the dying time, but he played with them played with it and you are playing with your own you 
are playing with your own. Grace of God. What is the grace of God saying? The grace of God is telling us that God will help you to put away ungodliness in your life. God will help you to put away sin from your life. Is the help of God. God will help you to put away Satan, demons, evil spirits, spirits of witchcraft, mummy spirit. He will help you to cast them out of your life. You must deny them. You must reject them. You must refuse them. You must cry out against them. Yes, all the, the, the pleasures of this world, excessive pleasure of money, the love of money, the pride of beauty, I am beautiful, I am handsome, I am wild, the pride of greatness, all those things that defile you, the Lord says, I will help you to purify you. I'm going to help you to live righteously, carefully, and godly in this present evil world. Can you see grace? I will help you to live righteously, to live well, to live holily in this present world. I will help you to overcome Satan, cast him out of your life, destroy his works in your life, and make you free from Satan in this present satanic world. That's grace. That's the voice of grace. That's the voice of grace. Yes. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Blessed hope is painful to say, I am doomed. They gave him a paper. And in that paper, like there was a stamp on it. In the stamp, you could read, Doom for Hell. He was sobbing, crying. Doom for Hell. So, but now God is saying, in that, in your case, because of the gospel, you are hearing. Because of the gospel, you are responding to positively, righteously. There's a blessed hope, hope of heaven. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Savior Jesus Christ, the great God. Great God, Savior Jesus Christ is one person. The glorious appearing. Jesus shall appear in the rapture of the great God. Jesus is the great God. And, and our Savior Jesus Christ. That's the description as a man. He is great God, but in the form of a man, he was Jesus Christ, our Savior. For unto us is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. After the pattern of man, because he became man, he was Savior called Jesus. But he is the, actually the great God, and he shall appear. 
who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. A peculiar people, zealous of good works. He gave himself. He became a man for purpose of sacrifice to save man. He became a man to die for man to save man. Yes. To save man. From all iniquity. You will still have some iniquity. Jesus has not finished his work in your life. Because here, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. The lie in your mouth shows Jesus has not accomplished his salvation in your life. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. This anger that is terrible in your life shows Jesus has not finished his work in your life. The work of salvation has not really been accomplished. The pride in your life shows the work of salvation in you has not been accomplished. The immorality of your life, the lusting, the immorality, immorality shows the salvation of God has not been accomplished. The cheating, the stealing, embezzling money, even to the money of God, without fear, shows the, 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 the salvation of your life has not been wrought out by Jesus. All iniquity, envy, jealousy, disobedience, wives speaking back to their own husbands, turning the husbands to become something else, not, not giving the husband the honor the Lord has given to the husband from creation. That is iniquity. And it shows the work of Jesus has not been accomplished in your life. Husbands that are wicked to their wives. Not listening to the word, husbands love your wives. It shows the work of Jesus has not been accomplished in your life. He came to the earth himself. He is the God of righteousness. Why is not your righteousness like his? Be ye holy for I am holy. He didn't send an angel. He didn't send man. If he had sent an angel, you would say Satan was the chiefest of the angels when he was in heaven. So the angel was unable to handle Satan. If he sent a man, you say, ah, all of us are children of Adam with polluted blood. How can dirty water wash clean a, cloth, a, a dirty cloth? He came himself. Then what is your reason that you are not totally free from sin? That's the word. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify. Can you see that? And purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Purify. Your heart will not think sin. Your eyes will not be seeing sin. Your mouth will not be speaking sin. Your ears will not take pleasure in, sin, in hearing sin. Purify unto himself. A peculiar people. Special. Special in this world. In this world of iniquity. In this present evil world. Purify. He can do it for you. It's only that you have been saying no. You have not given him attention. You don't even bother. You are waiting for hell. He could have done it for you. But your mind is not there. You are not looking for it. Yes. You are not looking for it. That is it. 
Look for it and get it. So, I am bringing Daniel and the three Hebrews children for us to learn righteousness and holiness in their lives. Daniel, a man that would not defile himself, a man that persuaded the other ones to join him never to defile themselves and keep, keep themselves holy, spotless for the living God. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the springs of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. I want you to note something here. Daniel was not a fearful man. Was, was he a fearful man? He wouldn't have done righteousness. Take away that fear that is in your heart. Concerning your boss. Concerning your husband. Concerning your wife. Concerning any man. Any woman. Concerning America and your, and your job. Is that fear that is hindering righteousness. Daniel was bold enough to announce to the leadership, I will not eat this food. If you are not bold and courageous, you will be afraid to speak out and show the condition, only the condition by which you will walk in this office. Otherwise, you are ready to leave that walk. But you are afraid. And God is there to favor you. God is there to favor your life. See Daniel, God opened that door for him. He will open the door for you, but you are too fearful to stand your ground. You are fearful to tell your husband, Holiness Revival Movement, I will go. If you say marriage is no more there, accept it. So that God will move in that man's life. You are afraid to say it. And that's why you compromise. Daniel, the righteous man, was a bold man. The righteous are bold like the lion. He was able to say to the, the, the prince of the eunuch, I will not eat the food that the king is bringing for us. I am a Jew. It is first sacrifice to idols. And we don't honor idols. Where are you not bold to speak? Be bold. Speak it. Speak to your husband. Be bold. God will take over. And humble that man. He would take over. Hey. A woman fell into immorality and uh, did restitution to her husband. The husband said, Park and leave, park and leave. She went into parking. She parked, I'm going. Yes. So if you say I should go, I'm going. When the husband observed that the woman is seriously parking, he said, ah, Forget it. Who is free here? Go back and stay down there. <laughs> I'm just telling you something. Amen. <laughs> I cannot remember the story very well now. Whether the woman went for four months or he stopped him without going. But brought back the wife. Say, who is free? What if she didn't confess? 
that sin would have remained a trouble to her because of cowardness, because of fear, and her righteousness could have done, come up as the light. Yes, God is with you. I say God is with you. So go and be bold, otherwise your lack, righteousness will be lacking. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Please, let God favor you. Wherever you see compromise coming, because of divine favor over your life, go and change circumstances. Say out what you can do, what you cannot do. And God will be with you. God will favor you. God will honor you. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar eventually praised the, 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 the God of uh, uh, Shedra, Mishan, and Abednego that they offered themselves and until they changed the, the king's commandment. According to the commandment of uh, uh, Babylon, who can, who can stand before the king? Who can change the king's world? But these people change the king's world. For righteousness sake. Why? They say, if I perish, we perish. If the Lord does not deliver us, we will die. And that is how God was honored. Honor God. Honor God. It's only few of you that are really there talking about God. The rest have gone. But the few of you, our God will prove to America that he is the honor of the world. That is if you are ready to stand. Not timid people. <laughs> Afraid all the time. Is there Boko Haram in America? But why are you afraid? Because of spiritual Boko Haram. Overcome them. We are living freely in Nigeria. Overcome them. Be bold about it. The Lord will surprise you. The Lord will change the decrees of America. Because of you. Hospitals will change their decrees. Companies will change their decrees. Because of you. Because your God is with you. That is how eventually it was done. The food was removed from Daniel. And the three Hebrews children. They ate what they wanted and still remain in the school. They ate what they wanted and still remain in the school. <laughs> they, they reject eating what they did not want and still remain in the school despite the nature of King Nebuchadnezzar. Look at what the, the prince of the eunuchs said to Daniel. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who had appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces what like in them, the children which are of your sword, then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. He shall cut off my head. <laughs> then said Daniel to Melza, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servant, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us poles to eat, and water to drink. I want you to take a risky step because you trust God. Take risk because you trust God. Prove your servant. If, what if God didn't do anything? Do they have power in themselves? But they believe in God that God will help them. Therefore, don't be afraid. Stand your ground in your family, with your husband, with your wife, in righteousness and holiness. God will support you. 
You are not doing this thing alone. The Lord taketh my side against them that hate me. Therefore, I will have my desire upon their lives. The Lord is on my side. Why should I fear? What can man do unto me? Except you challenge God like this. If your mind is that, that mind of compromise, the Lord will leave you alone and you will go to hell. Be bold. Be bold. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. The favor of God. You know, favor goes with righteousness. So shall thou have favor and good understanding before God and man. Righteousness gives you favor. Yes. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Can you see the power of God? God is standing by you. God is standing by you. God will defend your life. God will defend your righteousness. As you take risks for him, he will stand up for you. You will not be ashamed. You will not be overcome. They will not push you away. That is it. That is it. Then Milza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Can you see that? Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, as for these four children, was there no sacrifice? Does God promote for not? Was there no sacrifice? Did they no sacrifice? Yes. Was there no sacrifice? There was sacrifice. David said, I will not sacrifice to God that which does not pain me, does not cost me anything. That would cost me nothing. I will sacrifice that which will cost me something. Then God will go extra step. In fact, the Bible says, Solomon sacrifice a thousand bond offering to God. And in, in the night the Lord came to him, Solomon, what do you want me to do? Take risk. Take risk in real righteousness. When you know your life is right, take risk. You will see your God will stand for you. Yes. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, she 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 Michel, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times Better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. <laughs> you are hearing of, oh, but the Lord loves Pastor Porica. The Lord is using him. The Lord is, is it for naught? We give God uncommon, uncommon consecration. We don't allow sin in our lives. Is it for not? 
<laughs> Satan asks God, does Job serve God, fear God for not, has thou not blessed him? Satan, before that blessing came, Job was righteous, a perfect man. He hates iniquity. That's why the Lord bless him. So remove those riches. He remains the same. Perfect man. In all this job did not sin. Nor charge God foolishly. Before you get the blessing. Give commitment. Commitment to righteousness. Take the risk. Let people hate you. Let people disdain you. Let people criticize you. Let people drive you away. Let them let lose your job, whatever you, it is called. Then the Lord has got somebody to exalt in life. The Lord has gotten somebody to choose for the great blessings of life. He has gotten somebody. And you are that person. Why? You are committed unto him. Ten times better than all others. God can make you better. God can make you better. God can give you precious job. God can promote you in that working place. Give God uncommon obedience. Yes. The life of Daniel. Now, Meshach and Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego. Now let's go to chapter 3 of Daniel. Things to learn. Because your America in the in sin and terror, ready to devour, looks like the kingdom of Babylon. If you don't take this decision, I'm saying, you cannot keep righteousness in their companies, in their offices, in their workplace, in their shops, in their markets, in whatever. They will want you to tell lies constantly. Your bosses want you to tell lies. Your employers want you to tell lies. To tell lies. If you don't, they're against you. You must come out to say, like Martin Luther, herein I stand and I cannot tell lies. Simple. You can send me out. Send me away. I will not tell lies. I will not. Some wives, their husbands will want to meet them through the annals. Eh, I, if, if, I, if you love me, rebuke that. Rebuke it. Make him afraid forever. Never to try that. Ha! I will send you away. <laughs> I say, I remember the story of a woman in Jones that I had her story. She is, is, is a horrible woman. And uh, she was so zealous preaching gospel in Jones. The husband told her that she should leave horrible. Me, leave horrible. Don't, <laughs> don't complete the pronouncement of that name. It's God that gave that name to her. Horrible. Holiness Revival Movement. You will not live for I would take you to court and divorce you. Uh, the woman was so happy. Hey, so God has answered prayer. I've been looking for time to preach this gospel. New time. I must cook food for you. <laughs> I must do this one. I must run these errands. I must be before you for you to see my face. So you, okay, so you will send me away. Okay, beautiful. I like it. I will be free. I will fly. <laughs> In preaching this gospel, I'm going to fly here and fly there. Hey, I will have full time for Jesus. Hey, she waited for her husband to take the matter to court. The man was not going to court again. Ah, uh -uh. She kept on reminding her, what is happening to you? When, when are we going to court? <laughs> when are we going to court? The husband will keep quiet. Ah, ah, I say, when are we going? One time we asked, she asked the husband, this matter, why are you keeping quiet? 
When are we going to call the husband and say, leave me alone? <laughs> it's, it's not a timid, timid somebody. Like, hey, hey, if I do this, you will go to hell because of somebody. Why are you bothered? Why are you afraid? God can take care of you. God can take care of you without marriage. Who told you that marriage is more than heaven? And I told you, Daniel rejected the king's meat and still remained a student and graduated with honors. First class honors. You are afraid. Hey, if I don't do this, they will sack me. They will not sack you. Don't you know that the very hair of your head shall not fall to the ground unless your God gives permission? And if he gives permission, it's because there's a better place. Your husband will never send you away until God gives permission. Your wife will not live until God gives permission. Know this one and be free. Yes. That's the word of God. Now, in chapter 3, from verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then, the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship it shall be shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, at that time, with all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Mm. America. The land that pollutes every minister that comes there. Oh, America. The land that removes, the, removes righteousness from the citizens. Because of documents. Because of employment. Because of their, their police. America. The land that spoils the children. Turns the children to homosexuals. Pollutes them to sexual immorality. Even at tender age. America. The land that has exalted itself above all nations upon the earth, like Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold. It will take people in holiness of other movement. Ah, the people I am preaching to now, it will take them to humble America and show them that there's God in heaven. The Almighty reigneth in the, in the heavens and the earth is his footstool. 
he took the four Hebrew children, which lineage was different, the Israelites, to humble Nebuchadnezzar, who felt he must corrupt all living. He must corrupt all living. He must turn all to idolatry. In fact, that he is their own idol. He is their God. Otherwise, he will remove them from positions. He will deny them food. He will deny them this. He will kill them. He will do this. Hey! Three Hebrew children were there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were not of the breed of Nebuchadnezzar. They were not afraid. They were not cowards. They are of God. They are from the land of God. Hey, they knew God. God has chosen their tribe to make himself known to the whole world. They were in Babylon to make Babylon know God, the living God. Yes. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Go ahead and accuse. Don't be afraid when you are accused. Don't be afraid when they write against you. Don't be afraid when they conspire against you. Don't. If America is not doing well for you, come back home. If there's no space, for righteousness in America. Come back home. For where must you die? That's the man to you, the matter to you. Yes. And they spake, they spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, harp, sackbat, psaltery, and dulcima, and all kinds of music, shall fall, fall down and worship the golden image, and whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of, the, of a burning fiery furnace. Didn't you do say so, King Nebuchadnezzar, Your Excellency? I said so. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My brethren, where was Daniel? I am asking you, where was Daniel? Are there no four Hebrew children? Why, why are they only mentioning Daniel here? Had Daniel compromised? For, by no means. I must tell you, I, I, I will tell you what I believe Nebuchadnezzar must have done. Nebuchadnezzar told Daniel, you know, you, I know your Christianity, you will never bow. <laughs> Don't come to where my people are gathered. You hear? Don't come and embarrass me. <laughs> because I already know you. Carry your Christianity to the level they will know you in that place. Amen. <laughs> because Daniel was in the capital city. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have been dispersed, one to this side, one to this side, one to that side. So he didn't know them very well about their lifestyle. As for Daniel, he had already known. So he pleaded with Daniel, Daniel, you know, you are a great man. It took a great man that feared God and interpreted my dream in, in chapter 2. Now, you you already know the most high. <laughs> Don't come. When I command all my elders, my princes, my leaders, don't come, Daniel. You hear? 
I am saying the God of heaven will shine light in you, light in you, in your environment, light in you, in the workplace, light in you, in your family, light in you, everywhere that the devil will avoid you. He will say, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know. Let your husband know you. That you can't do it. Let your wife know that you can't comprom compromise. Then they will not even disturb you. In fact, your temptation will reduce. This thing, I am trying to reduce the temptations that come in your life. That's why I'm teaching you this thing. Because when you become bold, many people will not come. When you dress very clean, no palming, no jewelry, no short skirt, with your long blouse, your long skirt, and you're going smartly, who will be doing s s s s s on the way? They know that this is, <laughs> this is Hail Mary, Mother of Jesus. So they will have nothing to do with you. Your temptation will reduce. So, your temptation will reduce as your commitment increases. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They are announcing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What do they say here? They say, they have not regarded thee. It's true. Because... They will only regard you when you stay in the realm as king. But when you can't become God, they know that they have only one God. They will not regard you. They have not regarded thee. They serve not thy God. It's true. They have the living God. The God of all gods. Why, why condescending to low gods and idols? Those are not gods. The idols are not gods. They are the work of men's hands. So they don't serve them. What again? No, worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Worship Nebuchadnezzar. Thou shalt not worship man. Thou shalt not worship any other thing except God. So they don't worship Nebuchadnezzar. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought this man before the king. Were they shivering? <laughs> what our own has finished now? Uh, God, you know, God, why did you bring this temptation? God, were they shivering? I remove every shivering from your life. I remove every fear and timidity from your life. Let the power of the Lord descend from heaven upon you now and make you strong and bold and courageous for his name in Jesus' name. Yes. That is it. They brought this three men before King Nebuchadnezzar. They came bold, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, I'm sure he, he changed his tongue because he must add weight to his tongue, to his speech, to show that king is sitting down here. Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods? Now worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, herb, sackbat, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which 
I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God? Hey, human being, that shall deliver you out of my hand. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar, you just forgot. This is Daniel chapter 3. You forgot Daniel chapter 2. Eh? You forgot Daniel chapter 2. When Daniel came to you and said, There is a God in heaven that reveals a secret. All that you have, your dream, can no living man on earth interpret to you. You have forgotten to say, Who is that God? Thank you, you have asked a good question. You will know him. The person that wants to, to despise your God, he shall know your God with trembling. I say he will know your God with trembling. <clears throat> yes. Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O king Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Don't ask them to blow the flute, to blow the corner. We will not, we will not bow. Don't waste their time. Kai, they added to the anger of that man. Don't mind the anger of that man. The anger of man shall praise the Lord in your life. The anger of man shall praise the Lord in your life. The anger of man shall praise the Lord in your life. That which is angry and is doing on you shall bring forth wonders of wonders according to the wisdom of God that causes all things to work together for good to them that love him, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Don't fear the anger of man. Amen. Watch the anger of Nebuchadnezzar. Is it not anger that is making you afraid? Is it not anger that is making you compromise? Refuse to bother about the anger of anybody. Refuse to bother about the anger of your husband, the anger of your wife, the anger of anybody, boss in the office. Don't threaten by that anger. The greatest anger that was manifested on earth that is a little lower than that of the demons is that of Nebuchadnezzar. But the people didn't bother. Don't ask them to blow the whistle. We will not respond. If it be so that you will cast us into the fire, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Give glory to God in your life. Yes. Maybe your Christianity is not a serious one. That's why you are afraid and you will not give glory to God. Your Christianity is not a serious one. Now, I'm going to blow strong Christianity into your life. You hear me? I say I will blow strong Christianity. Receive! 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 God has given you. Don't be afraid of man. Don't be afraid of woman. Don't be afraid of the society, the nation of America. Don't. Don't be afraid of the policeman. Never. If there's anybody to be afraid of, be afraid of God. That's it. Be afraid of God. <laughs> Are you seeing me as a preacher of fear? Hey. No. <laughs> when I was with you last year, there was a guy in the conference. I, I, I was there. And what message did I preach? I think it was in, against the government of America. Uh, one of uh, the participants of the conference 
said he wanted to see me. Yes, so they gave me a place where he could see me. He saw me and said, why did you speak this way in America? Your own is finished. <laughs> Your own is finished. You didn't respect America. You didn't fear America. Uh -uh. Who is this person talking? I didn't know him. Who is this person talking that I should be afraid? Me. Should be afraid of America. So that what should happen? Eh? If I get afraid of America, that America will do what? America has no power to hurt me. America has no power to even do me good. It is God that is in my left and in my right, in my front and in my back, up and down. I will preach these messages very freely to you. And I will serve some. I will serve some. When we reach heaven, we shall jump. You will shake my hand and say, Pastor, I like your preaching. Your preaching saved me from America. I will say, yes, I did it purposely. The Holy Ghost power is moving me around. Amen. So, Amen. no fear. Praise the Lord. I'm, I am killing all fears in your life and the Holy Ghost will take over your life and that is how God will be glorified. Because your God is higher than every man. So, but if not, if God will not deliver us, be it known unto thee, O King, we will be entering eternal life. Because God, it means the time for our eternal life has come and God chooses that the best thing for us is to die. If God, if, if God does not deliver us, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Our life in the left and right is in the hand of God. We're in center. One thing we know, he will deliver. But if it is the best thing for us to die, then we are going to die. And that's the best period to die. So that we make it to heaven. If we die later than this, it will be dangerous to our life. If God has appointed this period to be the period to die and we refuse by compromise, it is going to be dangerous in our life. We will die at a terrible time and go straight to hell. But now, if he allows us to die, we are qualified to enter heaven. So we will die. We will say bye-bye to the earth. They lock up that man. So what can he do again? His anger reached its maximum. Now, what did he do? Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Sendra, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times more than it was one to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hearts, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me pause here. Kai, brothers, sisters, if somebody sends you to go and do evil against children of God, don't agree. You hear? Otherwise, you will die on the way. Amen. <laughs> Look at this man. They would have run away. I don't know why they waited to hear the errand of King Nebuchadnezzar. They were thinking he was God. 
They would have run away. Maybe one would have said, please, uh, 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 please, I just escaped. Maybe one would have entered into the toilet to go and eat himself and never come out again. He would have saved his life. He would have saved his life. Now they carried three people and because the fire was so hot and they must go by the voice of King Nebuchadnezzar, they didn't come back. They went to a hotter place, hellfire. I'm warning you. Hear me. God is with his children. God is jealous over his children. If anybody sends you to poison a child of God, don't agree. Otherwise you will die. I've told you. The fire slew these people. But what about the people thrown into hell? Then these men were bound in their courts, their horses, and their hearts and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fire of furnace. Because the fire was hot, the people that took them died on the way and never returned. And this, verse 23, and these three men, Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no heart. And the form of the fort is like the Son of God. Give a clap offering. Give Jesus a clap. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey. Amen. Hey. Amen. Huh. All that the fire succeeded to do was to burn all those chaffs. Those cords, those ropes, those chains that they bound them with. The one in the leg, the one in the hand. But as concerning their cloth, nothing happened to their cloth. As concerning the shoes they were wearing, nothing happened to the shoes. Fire just looked for the, fire just looked for the unwanted thing in their life and burned them off. And the fourth person, son of God, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. Call the name of your Lord and let him bless you. Call the name of your Lord. Let him bless you. Call the name of your Lord. Let him bless you. The Bible says, Count it not strange when you have fallen into diverse temptation. Knowing that the trial, the trying of your faith, work at patience. Let patience have a perfect work in your life. For we know that. The sufferings of this present time have nothing to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in our lives. Any suffering, be it family one, 
suffering from your workplace, suffering, even sickness, every kind of suffering. I'm telling you that you're passing through now is cause that you're passing through. The suffering will just change your life, remove all the impurities of your life, the things that are not wanting in your life, the suffering will just purify you, wash you clean. And the result of you is glory. For after that you have suffered a while, God will establish you, God will perfect you, God will settle you. God has only one son born to this world that has not sinned, has no sin, and his name is Jesus. God has no son that has never suffered. Why are you running away from suffering? Why are you running away from suffering when God has no son that has not suffered? Even when Jesus came, he suffered. Suffering is a gift. The Lord is saying, my son, my daughter, I don't want you to come to heaven and people will be giving testimonies of what they have suffered for me and you will have nothing to give. Therefore, I'm sending you on course. And this course is that you will suffer for one month, two months, one year, do this, one year, hey, you will suffer. You hear me? After your suffering comes glory. After the cross is the crown. I was telling that the Lord allowed me to go through suffering, I think for eight years battle with principalities and powers in my dreams in the physical in fact I will sit near the pulpit it's as if some wind of the devil will be pushing me as if against the wall yet I'm going to be the one to preach I just know that I am in battle if I go for crusade I could set blind eyes are open to see. Miracles of all kinds will happen. But after that crusade, as I come back home, battle with the devil. With my, in my sleep, battle. Hey! You are my people. One time, I, in fact, it, it, the, the operation was serious. I dreamed that I fell into latrine in my dream. It was the Lord allowed all this. But God, is it not me you are using to clear this, clear the devil away from people, bind all these forces, destroy these miracles are happening? But what is happening that all my prayer against safety and you are not seeing me to be hearing it? I'm, I have sent you on course <laughs> because I will use you to deliver people from demons in the international world. So I want you to become so hardened against demons. So, as they are pushing you, your heart will be hard. Your heart will be hard. Hard then. You will not be afraid of demons. Then you will handle them tomorrow. Hey, here am I today. I say, here am I today. <laughs> so, the Lord wants you to have a testimony. That is why he allows suffering on your way. When you go to heaven, what are you going to tell Jesus you suffered for him? When John the Baptist will be talking about his suffering, John the Beloved will be talking about his suffering, Peter will be talking about his suffering, Paul will be talking about his suffering. They say they call you, hey, sister, what about you? You'll be scratching your head like this. Eh, eh, eh. what will you be saying that's why God allowed you to suffer a while 
So when you are suffering, tell God, thank you. In everything, give thanks. That is it. So that's what they hope three Hebrew children didn't bother. Now, Jesus has made them. Set them free. Promotion is coming. Yes. Verse 20, I mean verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar has known that there's Most High God. But you say, who is that God? So you know there's a Most High God, Nebuchadnezzar. Some people who gave themselves to risk for the name of the Lord were the ones that humbled Nebuchadnezzar. I pray you will humble Satan. You will humble satanic people. You will humble satanic women. You will humble satanic men. You will humble satanic government. They will recognize the living God. Hallelujah. Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. They walked out of fire. <laughs> they walked, you know, they, were, they carried them and threw them inside, but now this time they walked, they were just walking out of fire and were coming out. Ha, this is mystery. May God make you walk out of your problem. Where the enemies think they have locked you up, they have caged you up, you will walk out of that room. Yes. That's wonderful. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king counselors being gathered together, so this men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Hey! Fire has no power. Gun has no power. Spear has no power. Bow and arrow has no power. Grenade has no power. Bomb has no power. Both spiritual weapons and physical weapons have no power over your life because you're a child of God. No was and hair of their head sinned, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Even to smell that something in the fire, you don't smell it. You see how God takes care of his children. Even to even smell that this thing passed through fire, no. The smell shall not be found in your life. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's world and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language who speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a downhill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. Let me add my own. And if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come to you for evangelism, just bow to them and accept what they are saying, because what they are saying is true. I have seen how God was with them in the fire and brought them out of the fire. Therefore, their gospel is the true gospel. Thank you. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon 
after suffering promotion. I say, I, what I'm saying, don't be timid. Look, look at what the Bukhanizah said here in verse 28. Then the Bukhanizah spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Number one, trust in God in whatever situation. As I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself because there's one action I'm going to take and that action needs boldness. It needs trust in God, not minding the government of Nigeria. I am going to take an action. So as I'm preaching to you, I'm receiving my own. Yes. Trust in God. That's what God says. Number two. They have changed the king's word. Why? Because they yielded their, their bodies. Why are you refusing to suffer? Why are you refusing to die? Paul said, if I've done anything worthy of death, I fear not to die. But you cannot die except your time has come. All this time they carry stones to stone Jesus. Did they succeed? Did Jesus die by stoning? Who told you that they were going to kill you, that you are afraid? God said, who are you that thou should be afraid of man that shall die? The son of man that shall be torn as grass and forgetteth the Lord thy maker and fearest continually before your adversary. What is the, where is the power of your adversary? So, they yielded their bodies. We have accepted. The worst thing can be done. For this God, for my faith in God, let the worst thing be done. Yes. And he said, uh, that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. They purposed it in their heart that they would not serve or worship any other God. Do so, my brother. Purpose it in your heart. You will not defy yourself. In America, in your nation, make a purpose and God will give you angel that will work out his will in your life. And these people, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. In the province of Babylon. Now, the last one, Daniel, chapter 6. From verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes who should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage. King, king Darius who took over Nebuchadnezzar because the, the kingdom changed from Babylon to Medopatia. Darius decided that he was going to set up some leaders to rule with him. And among these rulers, he decided to choose three people to make them be ahead of the other ones. Then, verse 3, this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole rim as Joseph was set over the whole rim in Egypt. The king thought to set Daniel over the whole rim. 
But here comes envy and jealousy. People envy you. People jealous. They jealous your life for some gifts and talents, for some blessings of God, for some for some goodness of God in your family, among your friends, or among your colleagues in working place. And some of them carry it too far into the realm of witchcraft. Some carry it into the realm of assassination. Some carry it into the realm of poisoning. Ah! But you will come out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Yes. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion, no fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him holiness. I told you, God will back you up as you dedicate yourself to holiness. Cain was envying Abel. Because of the righteousness of Abel, God accepted his offering. He did it in the correct way. God accepted his offering. But Cain was envying Abel. The Lord said, if you have done what is right, will ye not also have been accepted? Now you have allowed the devil to come into your life to haunt your brother. What has your brother done? What? Did he abuse you? Did he steal from you? Did he deprive you from offering sacrifice? What has he done? Actually, what has your sister done that you're hating her? What has that sister done that you don't want to hear her voice? Tell me. Why? Envy and jealousy. Pride. That's the whole thing. So, the people now then, in verse 4, the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said this man, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. As for Sin, evil, late coming, cheating, stealing, what? We will not find it in Daniel to pass through it. No. If we want to find fault, let us go the way of his God. He is so close to God that he does not want anything to touch it. Nothing will separate him. Let's try to separate him from his God. Then we shall, is there we shall see how he will react. So, they went to plan a kind of a plan that King, the King Darius was not aware about. It's like they were going to Daniel in the east because Daniel was in the east, but they follow the north. So that you will not even see as if Daniel was involved in the matter. They were not facing Daniel's direction. What did these people do? In carnal wisdom, the Bible says, in verse 6, Then these presidents and princes assembled themselves to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the captains, 
have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask petition of any god or man for thirty days save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of the lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and patience, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Can you see? It was Daniel they were looking for, but they did. They left Daniel because they sat down and think. The king loved Daniel above every one of us. If we look for any fault casually, the king will defend him. Now, my people, everybody loves praises. Everybody loves praises. Let's go and praise the king. Let us go and tell the king and say, O oh, king, you have been so nice to us in this nation. In fact, nobody is like you. The kings of other nations, we have heard about them, but they are not like you. Your intelligence is the intelligence of the gods. Your ways, wonderful. So, you are so strong, you are so powerful. King, allow us, we want to give you an honor that to make you, a, that when people hear this of you, they will know you are the greatest king in the universe. Now, king, we want to put you the position of the highest God. Let nobody pray to God, any person call God for, for one month, 30 days. For these 30 days, let nobody pray to anyone call God, only to you. After 30 days has expired, they can go back to their God and pray. I, we just want to celebrate you, king. And they started laughing. Others are laughing and clapping their hands. Hey, hey, hey there is a hey, live forever. Hey, hey, there is live forever. And the king thought that it was a good thing <laughs> we're doing for him. He didn't know that it was wickedness. <laughs> he didn't know that it was planned against his number one man that was going to bless his kingdom. He didn't know. So the king signed. And according to the, the laws of Peshe and Amedes, they Anything the king signed can never be reversed by the king or by anybody. So they got the king. The king signed, the, give, the, did the signet. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then this man assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. They have got it. They have got it. As the king signed this decree, they mean, some of them went to Daniel's house and went and stood around. <laughs> To know what Daniel will do. Daniel was never moved. He, the window was open to Jerusalem as usual. He bowed down on his knees. For that day, three times a day, offered worship to God. Brother, if it was you, Will you have prayed? And remember, it's just for 30 days. Will you not be waiting for 30 days? You go and make contract with God and say, God, you know it's not forever. <laughs> it's 30 days. So, I will not be praying to you. Just, in fact, I will do it in my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Compromise. I'm telling you, if you are not taking risk, you can't make this Christianity. Take risk. There's a God behind you that is interested for challenge of men. It is time for him to show himself. If it were you, well, I'm going to pray. These people don't know that I am a wise man. 
you will close the window, close the door. I, anybody see you? You will seal up every entrance. Anybody in your house says, go out, go out, go out. And cover everything. I say, God, how are you? God will say it's compromise. It's compromise. You're not serving him. <laughs> My people, this Christianity, you must take it seriously in America. Well, it's, it's the same principle every, every, in every nation. Same principle. Threats. Threatening you. Threatening you. And you're always hiding your face. You're running to hide. You can't confront them. You can't confront them. Confront them. God will break them down. Confront them. God will clear them away. Confront them. God will establish you forever. Amen. So, when they saw Daniel pray this way, verse 11, uh, uh, then, verse 12, rather, then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a, a decree? That every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and patience, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, hey, can you see? They spoke disrespectfully. Da Dani, slave, a captive that came from Judah. You want to make him a leader of us? Da Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Uh, the king now regretted the false honor they gave him. Brother, you are in leadership. There are people who can praise you a lot just because they want you to draw them to leadership. They don't have the spirit of God. They have testimonies to give. Hey, God did this, God did this. They have testimonies. Oh my God. They, since they have been a leader over us, there has been none like you. Oh, God loves us. God loves us. God loves us. Hey, everybody's talking about you. That person wants, he wants, he's doing market. He's selling a product and the product is himself. He wants you to magnify him, exalt him and put him somewhere. Or else he wants to make a fool of you. He wants to make a fool. Because Many people who offer praise are not original. Many who offer praise are not original. The angels that went after Satan, at the time they were still in heaven, they were praising God. Hallelujah, 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 Jehovah, hallelujah. But they, are not, they were not original. Satan had already affected them. So be careful with human praise. Be careful with praise singers who are coming for because they have some mischief over other people. See it now. The king became confused. Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was so troubled, so displeased with himself. These people deceived me because of Daniel. He set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. These people are wicked. They want, they know what, they, 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 they don't want me to succeed in my throne. Selfish people. Selfish people. Why are they trying to kill the innocent man? A righteous man. Sinners. <laughs> the king was angry. Then, this men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, 
that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statutes which the king established may be changed. Ah. King, you signed. And the law of Persians and Medes said, a decree that the king has signed must not be changed by any man, neither by king himself. That's where the power of the king ended. Okay. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, My power has finished. I can do nothing about you. Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. My brother, your God, whom you serve continually in righteousness and truth, he will deliver you. Beloved sister, in your darkness, in your circumstances, God knows you. The God that you serve with the whole of your heart, despite the conspiracy, the great people that gather in conspiracy, he will deliver you in Jesus' name. Yes. Ah. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Because of one righteous man, evil has been done to this righteous man. Evil has been done to this righteous man. God, if you are there anywhere that this man has been serving, appear. Where he appear. God, he has said his God is supreme. Appear. Show forth your glory. Who taught the king not visual? His burden taught him night vision for a righteous man. May God raise up people that should bother for you, that should fight for your freedom, that should fight against your enemy, that should deliver you from the hand of the lions, from the hand of wicked men. In Jesus' name! Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of the lions before any people will come and start mocking at him there was a faith that rose up in the heart of the king Daniel will not die Daniel will not die I've not seen a man like this sincere to his God Daniel will not die that faith was in the heart of the king hmm. Yes. And when he came to the den, he saw Daniel. He saw Daniel. He saw Daniel. And the, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel that he is sitting. He is seen with his eyes among the lions. And a songwriter said, Daniel met one of the one of the lions, his pillow. He was just lying. Hey! The king, the king was so excited. He cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? God will deliver you. God will deliver you from the hands of witches and wizards, from the hands of wicked men, from the hands of the government of America. God will deliver you from the hands of the evil men. Yes! Amen. Daniel answered, you will answer alive. <laughs> I say you will answer alive. 
Hey! Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. I still give you your honor. I know you are blameless in this matter. It's just God that wanted to show his power. It's God that wanted to show his power. It's God that wanted to reveal me to you and reveal me to all people and reveal himself to the whole world. It is God. It is God. O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. I am righteous and holy. My God has rewarded me for my holiness. My God has rewarded me for my righteousness. I don't have evil in my heart. I don't have bad plan in my life. O king, that is why all the lion's mouths were shut. An angel came down and did it. The angel is still here. I have not come out, so the angel is still here waiting for when I will come out. Then the angel can go back to heaven and give report to heaven. Hallelujah! Glory! <laughs> Praise the Lord! Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of heart was found upon him because he believed in his God. That is it. Believe in the Lord, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophet, so shall ye prosper. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, their wives, cry. That's the way they tell you that pray very well before you marry. See this innocent wife. She was not in the place where they did meeting. But this wicked husband carried the matter home. She put her mouth inside. He brought the matter to her family. The children said, yes, that man will die. They didn't know that the father has brought problem to them. They were contributing. They were contributing, jubilating. Yes. And now, they are going to face death. Don't carry things that will make your children die. I'm going to be telling them. Don't transfer animosity to your children. God will not spare them. Stay away from the animosity of your parents. As they haven't, maybe a father was telling some children, if I die, don't go to the house of that man. He did me like this. He did me like this. Don't receive that admonition. It's not from God, it's from Satan. Refuse it. Don't learn her ways. Don't learn his ways. Don't follow your mother, your father in evil. Live righteous so that their evil should not fall on you. Now, and the king commanded, and they brought those me which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Then their children and their wives and the lions had mastery over them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. The lion grabbed them from up bah, 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 before they even reached down. Wickedness has, a, has reward. The evil you think about your brother to do to him will come to you. Rejoice not, even when God is judging a man for his wickedness. If you rejoice, God will say, eh, so I have become an entertainer. So I'm entertaining you. Who told you that I'm happy judging him? Well, to God, all the, the world will be saved. It's paining me that I'm judging him for his evil. And you are laughing, thinking I'm, I, I'm playing music for you to dance. Hey, hey, come here, come here. 
and God start giving you bully. Bah! He said, hey God, where are you? He said, why are you laughing? <laughs> where were you rejoicing when I was punishing your enemy? So, that is the matter. The matter finished. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescued. And he walked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the patient. Righteousness prolonged his life. I've talked to you today about taking risk in righteousness. So that God will manifest himself to, to men. Take risk in righteousness. So that you will not compromise with the people of the world and perish with them. The God of heaven reproduced Daniel's story in your life. Amen. The God of heaven promotes your life. Amen. The God of heaven gives you grace to bear. Help you not to run away. Amen. Help you not to close your window and your door because you don't want anybody to see you. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Rise up upon your feet and tell God, I will be an original Christian. I will serve you originally. Yes. Yes. I'll take all risks. To serve the Lord. I knew you would be with me. I knew you would help me. I knew you would deliver me. I knew you would reward me. I know you will publish your name through my suffering. Go before the Lord. Go before the Lord. Talk to God about yourself. Before I begin to pray for you now. Worship you Lord. Worship Jesus. This is you today. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever. Be bold. Be bold. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Father. 
God, do it in your children. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Lay hand upon yourself. I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Daniel. To follow Jesus Christ. I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Daniel. To follow Jesus Christ. He was a man of courage. He was a man of boldness. I love to be like Daniel, to follow Jesus Christ. Daniel, be like Daniel, be like Daniel, to follow Jesus Christ. He was a man of holiness. He was a man of power. I want to be like Daniel, to follow Jesus Christ. Be like Daniel, be like Daniel, be like Daniel, to follow Jesus Christ. You need to be like Daniel, you need to be like Daniel, you need to be like Daniel, to follow Jesus Christ. Now your hand upon yourself to receive the virtues of God. Confess your sins. Confess your sins. Promise God you will serve him. Tell him you are going to live a righteous life. Tell him your life will not be the same from today. You will be for God. Then grace is coming. Boldness is coming. Courage is coming. You will take risks for him. And you will promote him in America. You will promote him in the nation where you are. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Confess. Remove sin from your life. Invite Jesus into your heart. Invite Jesus into your heart. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, all things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. They were written that if we follow suit, we shall be blessed. Your children in America, they are in troublesome place. Where the government fights against righteousness. Where Satan corrupts everything. I am praying that the power of boldness, the power of courage will come upon your children. They will not be afraid. They will not be afraid to execute righteousness. To exhibit righteousness in every corner of America. In Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost promote them, provoke them to take risk. Let them take risk for God. Yeah, before man, before government, before institution, before the church. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord, don't disappoint them. Don't disappoint the married woman before her husband. The married man before his wife as he's taking stand in boldness to speak for God. Don't disappoint the church. God before the world as they take their stand. Don't disappoint the believers. 
Don't be disappoint your precious children. Back them up in Jesus' name. The Christianity, they came with to this conference. It's now a new one. The prodigal son came and the rags have been removed. A new shoe is put on him. New clothing is put on him. The right of sonship is given to them. Therefore, recover them. Powerful upon you. Powerful upon you. Powerful upon you. Powerful upon you. Power of Christianity. Power of Christianity. Fall upon them. Fall upon them. Fall upon them. Power of Christianity. Power of Christianity. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Go and serve the Lord. Be free. Carry no fear. Carry no timidity before anybody. Don't say a man is your leader and the man is demanding something wrong from you and you're afraid. No! Be bold about it. Be bold about it. We're not careful to answer you. We're not recognizing your position in this matter. Your position is taking me to hell. I'm not sub I will not submit to it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah! I will hear better testimony about you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you.